Okay, we're going to go over the how to use the bulk work upload function in the MLC portal. So when you log into the portal, you'll land here. This is your member home screen. You'll click view member, and then you'll see on the left hand side here uh, under catalog, the two options to register your works. We have our register individual work and register bulk works. The bulk work upload is a great option for um, those who have maybe several hundred works. So that's too many to probably use the individual work registration, but maybe you're not set up to use CWR. So this will be a really good option for you if you're somebody who's managing a little bit larger data set. So when you land on this screen, there's a lot of really important information that you'll need to know before you get started. Um, I wanna point out this note here. You should only register publishing information for the shares that you control. So for instance, if there is a co-writer on your work, you're only responsible for registering the shares that you control. It'll be on the other party to either edit the existing work and add their claim to those shares or you know, register whatever they own. Another very important and helpful part of this page is this on the right-hand side here, how do I format the file? It calls out some specific things that need to happen in order for the file to upload successfully. So you'll notice there's mention of required fields, dependent fields. We'll talk about that in a minute when I open the template. One thing to point out here is that there is a maximum of 300 rows for the file to upload successfully. So 300 rows does not equal 300 works necessarily. You could have a work that requires a couple of rows. So for example, if you have a work and there are two publishers for that work, that will have two rows. So it's 300 rows for you need to put your information into a new template and upload that. You can upload as many templates as you'd like. They just all need to meet that data maximum. And then lastly, at the moment, we are able to upload this in XLSX format. We will have CSV format available soon. It's just not quite ready yet. When the CSV format is available, we'll indicate that which formats are acceptable to be uploaded. So another thing to notice is that we do note what version of the template is available. If you ever find yourself and you notice, oh, there's a version two of this template, I would recommend downloading the template again, because sometimes when we update the template, it won't accept any old version of it. So always double check and make sure that you have the most current version of the template. So First things first, you'll download this template. It is again an Excel file. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do after the file is open is enable editing. That will allow you to make changes. Then I would also recommend saving a copy onto your desktop or wherever you would like to save it. Um, and so that you can basically have a fresh copy that's editable and quickly saveable. So, when you open this, um, you've got a couple of tabs down here at the bottom. Format is the template itself. So this is where you're going to input your data. As you can see, we've provided some example data and the appropriate way to fill out this template. So you kind of have a guide. You don't have to guess how it works. Um, the next tab is the field definitions. So field definitions, this is Every field that you see here, basically what those fields mean, which ones are required, which ones are uh, dependent fields. So all the required fields are marked with an asterisk. That means that we have to have that information in order for the file to upload successfully. So you'll notice you know, primary title, writer last name, writer role code, uh, publisher name, publisher IPI, collection share. Those are all the required fields. So technically, if you were to only fill out those fields, your file should upload just fine. Another thing to note are the dependent fields. So the dependent fields, they're not required, but if you fill out one, you need to fill out the other. So for example, if you were to fill out the AKA title, you would need to also fill out the AKA title type code. So just to give an example, as you can see here in these, I have my AKA title here, therefore I also need to have this field filled out. If I don't have either of them filled out, that's okay too. The only thing that doesn't work is if I have one filled out and not the other. You'll probably be wondering, there's a couple of codes here, the AKA title type code and the writer role code. 
there are tabs to inform you what to put in. So for the AKA title type description, if you know it's the formal title, instead of typing formal title, you'll type in FT. Um, same with the writer role code. If you are the composer author, you'll put in CA as opposed to this into this template. A couple of other things just you'll see with the example data, but just wanted to call it out because um, we talked about the number of rows. So song one example is the work. You'll notice it. I only put song one example here. I've got two writers. So um, I basically put one writer here. I put the next writer on the next line. Um, same with the publisher. I put one publisher here. I put the second publisher on the next line. So I'm saying that because if you put both writers on the same line or both publishers on the same line, that will cause some issues in, in the upload. So make sure that you designate if you have multiple writers or multiple publishers, um, even multiple recordings, let's say, they each dictate their own line under this one work. You don't have to keep filling out the work title. So with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and demo um, this function. I'm going to show you a few of the errors that you might receive. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of show uh, what successful uploads look like. So let's say that you have filled out your template, but there's maybe some data missing. So for example, you may have missed a publisher IPI, for example. What happens if you missed a required field uh, when you attempt to upload the format, um, it'll let you know that, that there's some data missing and it'll tell you what field it's in. So it, I know that I need to go back to that template and fit and input a publisher IPI in a couple of different places. Um, so whatever it may be, that could be a required field, that could be that I have one um, dependent field filled out and not the other, it'll let you know what's missing and, and where you need to, to fix it. So that's one example of um, an, an error that you could receive. The other one is if your file is too large. So let's say I've got over 300 lines in my file and I try to upload it, we're also going to prevent you from doing that and let you know, hey, you need to break that up into multiple files um, before you can proceed. So let's say I've got all my required fields, my dependent fields figured out, my file's the right size, I'm ready to upload my works. Basically what's happening here is that all your data is going, passing through a validation. This doesn't mean that we're checking for the correct data, like correct IPIs or, you know, checking for any type of overclaim or issue like that. All we're checking here is that essentially the validation is correct. So for example, when I click in to resolve the error and I see in red, here's my error, there's an issue with this IPI. The issue with the IPI is that it's the wrong, like it's basically the wrong length. So there may be too many digits here. Um, too few digits. So that's what I mean, like about passing a, a, a validation. So if I've got um, this IPI, for instance, needs to be fixed, what I can do, I can go ahead and resolve these errors right in the work by clicking edit. I knew that it was a publisher IPI that I needed to fix. So I'll go ahead and edit this publisher. And as you can see, the new IPI is in there. I believe I had to fix this one as well. So I'll go ahead and put this one in here. Another option here, like let's say there's something else wrong with the publisher. If you edit and hit edit publisher, it will go ahead and, and move you to the next error. There's no other error here. So that's why I didn't go anywhere. But since I fixed that, now I get moved along in the next screen, just confirming that the publisher shares are correct, which they are. I can hit next here. And then now that I've fixed that problem, as you can see, this turned blue with a blue check mark and I'm ready to submit this. So when I hit save, that error was resolved and I can go ahead and move on to the next thing that needs attention. So this is a great option to do it right in the portal if you've got a couple of errors. Now, if you're in a situation where 
you have lots of errors that you need to resolve and maybe they're all one thing, you can also choose to cancel and start over and fix the file itself and then re-upload it into the portal. So it's your option. If you have errors to resolve, you can do it directly in the portal like that. We do highlight all the errors in red so you know what to fix. But if you're like, wow, that's a lot of errors, it would be easier just to do it in the file and try again. You can absolutely do that as well. The last thing I wanna show you is just what a, I everything's perfect, I'm ready to upload um, looks like as well. Once this is uploaded, it'll say great, or ready to be submitted. Um, you can click through and, and double check all the data before you submit, but if they're in green and they're ready to go, you can go ahead and submit all 23 works and they, are, uh, they will go into the registration process. Let's say in an example where I, maybe I had a lot of works to be resolved, but I didn't have the information. So I'm gonna go ahead and browse that file again. Um, so let's say in this scenario, I'm ready to submit the like 21 works or 20 works that are ready to go but I need to um, come back to these for whatever reason. You can submit the works that are ready to go. And then the works that need attention will just move into your registration drafts. I'll show you where to find them as soon as this is done. So um, save to drafts here. And then you can come back to these works when you're ready to, with the information that needs to be resolved, whatever that information may be. So when you move into your drafts where it'll automatically put you you can see that these works are here. I can edit them and when they're ready, I'll submit them. All of your registration drafts will save for up to three months before we go ahead and clear those out for you. And that is how the bulk works registration functions.